Hello again, it's magician Mike Rose. I'm back to teach you another amazing card trick. By the way, have you been practicing the card tricks I've taught you so far? Once you practice them, it's important that you try them out on people because you won't find out how amazing your card trick is until you try it on somebody. You can see the reactions that you get. So that's the whole point. Once you learn the card trick, make sure you try them on people. Well, today's card trick uses something that everybody has, but everybody's is different. Fingerprints. We're going to use the fingerprints of your volunteer to perform an amazing card trick. Let's come down here to the table so you can see the trick up close. Now this card trick, like many card tricks, starts out by having someone choose a card. Now it's important that when the person chooses the card, they don't let the magician, in this case that's you, they don't let the magician see the card. So you spread out the cards, and you can even begin by showing them that the cards are all different. It's not a special deck. So you spread out the cards face down and have them choose a card. And you ask them to make sure not to let you see it. Now, for the video, I'm just going to choose a card myself because I don't have someone here to choose it. So let's pretend that your volunteer has chosen this card. They look at the card. Now again, in this case, on the video, I know what the card is, but when you perform the trick, you won't know what the card is. In this case, it's the Two of Diamonds. So, they're memorizing their card. You just place the deck on the table, and once they've finished memorizing their card, the Two of Diamonds, ask them to just place it on top of the deck. And to make sure that the card is lost, we just give the deck a cut. That way they can't accuse you of later on peeking at the top card and seeing what card they chose. So their card's lost in the deck. Now what you do is you ask them to extend their hand so you can examine their fingerprints. You tell them how every person's fingerprints are unique and because they touched the chosen card, you can examine their fingerprints and spot their fingerprints on one card it will have to be their chosen card. Now, of course, they won't believe you, but you say, well, let's find out. I'll prove it. I'm just going to start looking at the cards. I don't see any fingerprints on that one, not that one, not that one. No, I'm not seeing any fingerprints that look like yours yet, but I'm not done yet. I don't see any there or there or... Wait a minute, that one? Nope, that doesn't have your fingerprints. That, those are my fingerprints. Uh, no, I don't see your fingerprints yet anywhere. You did touch a card. Oh yeah, I remember you touched a card. Let's see if I can find your fingerprints. And wait a minute. I think I see your fingerprints. Would you be amazed if the next card I turned over was actually your card? Because I think I see your fingerprints. Here we go. I'm going to turn over the next card and it's going to be yours. Oh, not this one. This one. Your card, the Two of Diamonds. Now, that's kind of a little joke you do where you make them think that it's going to be the next card in here, but it's actually the card they chose. It was already on the table. Now, obviously, I knew it was the Two of Diamonds for this video, but when you perform it, you don't know what card they chose. So how do you know which card they chose? Well, here's the secret. There's some very simple preparation, and you can even do this in front of people. You can borrow a deck from somebody, and you can ask them to shuffle the cards. They don't have to, but you can have them shuffle the cards. They can cut them a few times, whatever they want. You can show the cards are really mixed up. And when you turn the cards face up to show they're really mixed up, this is the little secret preparation you have to do. You memorize the bottom card. In this case, the Five of Diamonds. Now, it will be different every time if the people mix up the cards for you when you perform the trick. So you just show them that they're all mixed up, and that gives you an excuse to look at the bottom card. You square them up, and now you're ready to go. 
Just don't forget the bottom card, in this case, the five of diamonds. So you spread the cards out. Your volunteer really does choose any card they want. You square the cards back up. Remember, the five of diamonds is on the bottom. And place it on the table. They're looking at their card. Well, the two of diamonds again. That's weird. That is just a coincidence. I did not try to do that. But anyway, whatever card they choose, which happens to be a two of diamonds again here for some reason, they're going to memorize the card. Then you ask them to place it on top of the deck. Then you say, now I want to be accused of peeking at the top card, so I'm going to cut the deck and bury your card in the middle of the deck. And when you do that, see what happens? That puts the bottom card, the one you know, right on top of their card. So now the five of diamonds is right on top of their card. You square them up, and they think that's fair. Their card is lost in the deck. Then you ask them to hold out their hand, and you say, I need to examine your fingerprints. Now, of course, the trick isn't done with fingerprints, but this makes the trick interesting. It makes people think, well, maybe he really could see my fingerprints. Maybe somehow that's how the trick works. So that's the, the presentation that you use to make the trick a little more deceptive. And now you start pretending to look for their fingerprints as you're going through the cards. Apparently, you're looking at the back of every card, looking for some kind of fingerprints. And as you're going through the cards, you're throwing them in kind of a sloppy pile on the table. Table. You don't make a neat pile. And the reason is, as you're throwing these down here, you're looking for that card that was on the bottom of the deck that you memorized. In this case, the five of diamonds. And when you see it, you just keep going. There it is. You know the next card will be the chosen card. And it is the two of diamonds. But you don't end the trick yet. You turn over a few more, like you're still looking for fingerprints, but you leave their card slightly exposed. That's why you're making a sloppy pile. And as you're looking for fingerprints, they saw their card go by. They think you messed up the trick. They think, oh, you're not going to find it. It's already been dealt to the table. And you're still going through, and then you stop and go, oh, wait a minute. I think I see your fingerprints. And you act as if you're seeing it on this card. But you don't say that. You go, I think I see your fingerprints. As a matter of fact, I'm sure I do. The next card I turn over will be your card. And they're thinking, no way, because my card's already been dealt to the table. But that's all you do is reach down, grab their card, and say, the next card I turn over will be your card. And that was your card. And that is it. So, doing a little bit where you apparently miss their card and keep going makes it kind of funny because people are more entertained when they think the magician messed up the trick. So it looks like you've messed up, but then at the end, you say the next card I turn over will be yours. You grab their card, turn it over. And that is the fingerprint card trick. So the fingerprint card trick really is not that difficult to learn. Once you understand all you have to do is memorize the bottom card of the deck, the trick pretty much is easy to do. But what you want to practice is your acting skills. Because when you're dealing the cards onto the table and you pass the chosen card and you keep going and then you get to another card and you say, I think the next one I turn over is going to be yours. Well, you want the people to believe you. That you want them to really think you seem to have made a mistake. So you want to act natural and realistic when you're talking these lines about, oh, I think the next card I turn over is going to be yours. And then when you reach down and turn over their card on the table, not only are they surprised because they thought you were talking about the card still on the deck, but they're amazed because you really found their card. But we can go even further. I have a little extra tip, a little extra for experts. That's right, the extra for experts uses a prop, something that many of you may have in your home already, a magnifying glass. Now, you don't have to use the magnifying glass, but if you have one, use it. It makes the trick even more deceptive. At the beginning, when you have them extend their hand so you can examine their fingerprints, you examine their fingerprints with a magnifying glass because fingerprints are hard to see with just the plain eye. So with the magnifying glass, you're really selling the trick that you're really going to be using their fingerprints. Then when you're going through the cards, dealing them on the table, you can look at the backs of the cards every now and then with the magnifying glass like you're having trouble spotting their fingerprints. Again, acting. Use the magnifying glass. And this will really help sell that you're really using their fingerprints because the audience would think, why else would you use a magnifying glass if you weren't really trying to see my fingerprints? Well, it's because you're a magician and you know this helps with the deception of the trick, the magnifying glass. 
Well, that's about it for the fingerprint trick. We're done for today's lesson, but there will be more. So I hope you practice the trick. Try them out on people. That's why they're here, so that you can actually try them on people and amaze your friends. We're done for today. I've been Mike Rose. Go get your deck of cards. See you next time.